Sheila, we got the heads of Warner on the phone. Thanks, doll tits. And that's not a knock on you. I'm talking about the old school Barbie. I like them thin in the waist and thick in the base, if you catch my drift. Gentlemen, and mandatory woman, Jonathan Cross here. I have another billion doll hair chest buster for you. Sorry, I got Barbie on the dick. Jonathan Cross on the horn. Look, we know what a big deal it was to get BBS, Dawn of Justice, on the silver screen. And with the recent success of Aquaman and Shazam, I want to tear it all down again, go back to an ensemble picture. For BVS 2, things are going to get crazy fast. Try to keep down, because what I'm throwing at you is different, it's unique. This version is going to be so crazy, it's going to make visionary director Zack Snyder's previous entry feel like a quick tug to a magazine from a kiosk at your local gas station. Film fades up to an ice cave, deep underground, somewhere in northern Shambhala. Winter Gear Batman is cuffed and pinned to a wall. Made of ice. A familiar face enters the fray, walks down a frosted corridor, it's Superman. Pulls off the cowl, revealing, yes, Ben fucking Affleck. I got him back. He signed on for this. Batflack says to him, I feel like we've done this dance before. Bruce Wayne then wakes up from his dream slash premonition, and he finds out that some things haven't changed. Soups is still a D-bag even though the future and the location are a bit different. Meanwhile, a ripped Jonah Hill, AKA Green Lantern, is having a space battle with the rest of his team. He successfully records and transmits to the Amazonians a message of help and a warning sign for things to come because Brainiac is coming to Earth. Brainiac is going to be played by Jesse Eisenberg. And I know, I know what you're thinking, shut up. Shut the fuck up, I know what you're thinking, I shut up. I know Jesse Eisenberg is already the perfect Lex Luthor. We're going to have him play double roles. He's going to be Mike Myers in this situation and Austin Powers. If he can do it, so can the talented, so can the surreal, so can the remarkable Jesse Eisenberg. And not only is Eisenberg playing one character or two characters, he's playing four. With Mr. Freeze and Calendar Man also in the lineup. Thought there might be a comment about Calendar Man being in there, but okay, we're going full steam ahead. Wonder Woman is everybody's favorite gal. So we're going to put even more focus this time in objectifying her. My boy Whedon did an admirable job with Justice League. Trying to loosen that camera up a bit. Scoop on behind Wonder Woman's ass. Give the boys something to look at. It, it was fun. It was fair. But I think we can go further. I'd like to see a scene in this film where Wonder Woman comically loses all of her clothes. And she has to run around uh, in front of conveniently placed objects that have sexual connotations, of course. Once again, a uh, tip of the hat to Austin Powers 2. Harley Quinn, Batgirl, Catwoman, Cheetah Girl. Not to be confused with Cheetah Girls, which was an ensemble power group featuring Raven Simone, will also be present, introduced in this picture. Well, Harley Quinn's been there, so she's just going to come back. Hawkman, played by Jesse Eisenberg, of course. Robin, Raven, Craven, Beast Boy, Carly Rae Jepsen, and Martian Manhunter round out the ensemble. Plot-wise, we're gonna go from cashews to full-blown nuts when the audience learns, along with the characters in the film, that Soups wasn't the only man mother-boxed back to life. That's right. Somewhere in that pool of ship semen, Dark Side rises again. That was his name, right? Dark Side? That was that ugly fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. The last one. Sheila going to break Lex Luthor out of prison, and they're going to team up with a whole bevy of characters. We've got Scarecrow. We've got uh, Killer Croc's son, Murder Gator. We have Harley Quinn, who's now been replaced with a younger actress, uh, and we're hoping that hardly anyone will notice. <laughs> I'm joking. I just wanted to use that pun. After many epic battles spanning space, Earth, and under the sea with Aquaman, we are going to pull back the curtain for a reveal that no one's going to see coming. This was all fever dream for Supergirl. That's right, she's in the picture. This is really a Supergirl story. Oh yeah, Supergirl's gonna be played by Jesse Eisenberg as well. We're gonna smash cut quickly to when Supergirl was a baby on the planet Krypton with Cal l He goes out one penis pod, camera flies down the corridor, she goes out another. Final scene of the film is gonna be Supergirl slamming down to fight. She's gonna be surrounded with her colleagues. You have zombie Superman. You have Green Lantern, you have a one-armed cyborg, you have a three-armed beast boy, don't ask. Shazam! Shaq's Kazam! Shaq Steel! And just Shaq himself. They all do a slow-motion hero run at the camera, credits come up. We smash cut hard again. Wonder Woman gets up, naked of course, sweating, super hot. This whole thing was a fever dream for her. 
a premonition she has to warn the others, she says. She goes over to the Amazonian light, flips it around, bad symbol in the sky, it's red. Gets the fans theorizing, gets the blogs hungry, gets people tweeting, gets people talking. We're going to have a mid-credit scene where Alfred, played by Jeremy Irons again, opens a locker, grabs a sword and armor, and says, fine, I'll do it myself. No, I don't even know what that means, but we're going to put it in there. Because he had one last time where he was talking to someone, we didn't use that. Post-credits, post-theater lights coming up scene features Jared Leto, everybody's favorite joker, back again in the tattoo chair. This time he's getting a tattoo above the left ass cheek that says, Marvel sucks. It's going to be great. Kids are going to love it. DC, you know, forever and all that shit. Post-credits, post-leaving the theater, checking your phone, and getting an instant message from the DCEU slash Warner Brothers community that shows Scarecrow had implanted the fever dream into Wonder Woman's head. It was his plan all along. He's going to be the main villain going forward. We have a picture? Yeah, you're goddamn right we have a picture. Sheila, get Eisenberg on the phone. He's got some work to do.